Let me take my colleagues back in history. Just a few months, just to last year. I don't imagine that any of us don't remember the scandal that the Department of Veterans Affairs was facing. The stories across the country of fake waiting lists, of services not provided, of the potential death of veterans while waiting for those services to occur. I also would think that at least many of my colleagues would agree that for much of the last few years, the United States Senate hasn't done much of the business it was designed to do and that needed to be done in our country. But I remember a day in August of 2014 in which the United States Senate, U.S. House of Representatives, were successful in passing a bill. And it, it's somewhat embarrassing to me to be on the Senate floor praising the accomplishment of a bill passage. It's part, a significant part of what should be the normal course of business of the United States Senate. But those of us, and I would put all of my colleagues in this category, who care about the service men and women who sacrificed for the benefit of their fellow countrymen and came home to a Department of Veterans Affairs that failed to meet their needs. I've indicated that since I came to Congress, both in the House and in the Senate, I've served on the Veterans Committee. This is an issue that we need to make certain we get right. I remember the moment in which that bill passed and was sent to the President, and I think finally, finally something good has come. A bill has been passed. Something important to our veterans is occurring. But the reality is the implementation of the Choice Act has created many problems, and in my view, the Department of Veterans Affairs is finding ways to make that implementation not advantageous to the veteran, but self-serving to the department. Here's what catches my attention today. We're reviewing the president's budget. And within that budget is this language. In the coming months, the administration will submit legislation to reallocate a portion of the Veterans Choice Program funding to support investments in the VA system priorities. What the president's budget is telling us is that there is excess money within the Choice Act. We allocated money, emergency spending, to fund the Choice Act, and the President's budget is telling us, well, we think there's too much money in there. We're going to submit legislation to reallocate that money to something we think is a higher priority. Who would think? In fact, I admired Secretary McDonald in his early days at the department in which he talked about how the VA is going to serve the veteran. The decisions we make at the VA will be directed at how do we best care for our veterans. I respect Secretary McDonald for that attitude and approach, and I want the department to follow his lead in accomplishing that mission. But lo and behold, the president's budget says there's excess money that we now want to transfer to other priorities. So clearly, it's not a funding issue. The department is making decisions for some reason, again, that makes absolutely no sense, defies common sense, and certainly doesn't put the veteran ahead of the Department of Veterans Affairs. I don't know what the story is that these kind of decisions would be made, but it certainly is worthy of the United States Senate to make certain that the department implements its moment of triumph, the Choice Act, in a way that benefits those we intended for the legislation to serve.